You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win oh, the game. Shit. You don't play to just play it. Congratulations, Green Bay. That's the great thing about sport. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Now. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. And, you know, here we are. It is Saturday. We've hired three coaches. Um, since we brought in Mike Zimmer, we still have the passing game coordinator, and I'm still hoping, still hoping that there's a possibility that Steve Wilkes could be the one to fill that role, just to kind of stick it to the San Francisco 49ers. Because now the 49ers, you know, as good a team as they have been, and have been for several years, basically being a thorn in our side, we know the curse of losing in the Super Bowl. Eagle fans thought for sure they were going to be back the next year. And we saw how they kind of took a major step or two back. And there's a lot of rumblings of things going on with the San Francisco 49ers. It's hard to win consistently in the NFL. I understand Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones's point of we want to be good every year in building for the future instead of saying we're going to go all in. I get that. Don't necessarily agree with it. You have to pick and choose when you say, we're close. We need a little extra oomph. The Cowboys' philosophy, of course, is building through the draft. And that works out great when you have great drafts. But I want to take back, go back a little bit and see how we've done over the last three years. Because if you're only diving in free agency as fill-in guys, And when you're trading for guys, you're trading later round picks for guys that are past their prime. No disrespect to Brandon Cooks or Stephon Gilmore. But as I hear people say, sign Bobby Wagner, a guy I was talking about two years ago, we've now put on another 300 plus tackles on a body that's gotten two years older. And typically, that's what the Cowboys always do. We don't bring in primo players. We bring in good players that are now old. This is like Washington bringing in prime time after his prime. When we bring in a Clinton HaHa Dix, a George Iloco, a a Gerald McCoy, an Everson Griffin, um, a Don Terry Poe, These are all older set guys. Half the time, they don't make it through the season. Jason Peters. We have to get out of that. But let's go back. I want to go back to the 2021 draft. Okay? 2021 was the draft, of course, we got Micah Parsons, linebacker, and didn't really know what we were going to get out of him. And he ended up becoming incredible. Just incredible. Uh, On and off the field, incredible blogger, uh, NBA MVP last night, incredible. You can't can't argue with that pick, although they actually wanted to go cornerback. (sighs) Kevin Joseph, and this is where my new philosophy for the Cowboys is, just trade your number two picks. Either package it up with your number one and try and move up further, or trade back with that number two and get some thirds. Because for whatever reason, the Cowboys' second-round pick does not help them much. Ever. Ever. The two that you look at that have been good for them, Diggs and D-Law. And that goes for the last 12 years. Sam Williams and Schoonmaker, the jury's out. We'll see. They're still young. Still time to turn around. But boss man fat, oh boy, what a disaster. We did draft Osa. This is the 2021 draft. Osa and Digazua, 
who has been a good, very good defense tackle. Be it he is a little bit small. He's a great pass rusher. He's got great hands. But as being a run stopper, he doesn't have enough ass, ass back there to drop the anchor. Chauncey Golson, an, another good role fill-in edge rusher. Not a bad pick. Not Sean Wright, not a bad pick. You know, um, we're talking about a third-round pick. Um, Jabril Cox, no longer on the team. Josh Ball, ugh, has not been great as a fourth-round pick. Semi Fioco, yeah. Quentin Bohannon, no longer on the team. Israel Mahanaku, um has been good. Matt Fornick, ha- haven't seen him much on the field. When we go to the 22 draft, 22 ends up looking a lot better this year than it did the first year. Tyler Smith was a great pickup. That's the instant impact guy that we had, you know, we needed. Unfortunately, we lost Tyler Smith off the bat, in which case he ended up having to basically trial by fire, play left tackle, but right now is one of the best left guards in football. Jalen Tolbert is becoming a role player, is beginning to play well, and I expect to see him on the field more. I think, unfortunately, that we're going to end up getting rid of um, – yeah, uh, you know, moving on. Um, uh, boy, I'm having a brain fart this morning. Um, Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson, you look at and say, that one may end up being a home run pick. Tight ends typically take a while to develop and um he's second year was probably the best tight end play we've had in quite a while. Seriously. Some people will um disagree with me. But I'm telling you, he is the real deal. Sam Williams um, has been decent in in spots, has too many penalties on special teams. But I'm on board with saying that maybe we should look at trying to make him a linebacker. Make it a project with his size and his speed and see if he has the wherewithal to do that. Because you don't have a thumper in the middle. Matt Lewinsko, a guy they've been really high on. Damone Clark got lots of playing time. Deron Bland um, is in the record books there with most pick sixes. So you look at the 22 draft class, and at first not getting that much out of it, last year all of a sudden it turns around and it is great. Okay, so you had one great player basically the year before. You had a lot of decent players going through the next year. After that... This is where last year was not good. Um, sorry, I'm behind here. We ended up having the worst draft class last year. Last rated draft class. We got absolutely positively nothing. Out of last year. That's not to say that we don't have the second year step up. I thought for sure that Mozzie Smith was going to be able to help plug the hole along with Hankins to be able to rotate in there and to help us with the run stopping. I'm not sure what the plan is for Mozzie Smith. He is now under 300 pounds where he was 337 and could hardly get on the field. We're going to need a big punch on that defensive line. We're going to need two big guys to fit Mike Zimmer's um, defense. And we'll have to wait and see if Mozzie Smith can turn that around. That narrative was just not good. Schoonmaker was injured most of the offseason and through training camp and ended up being, he he played more later in the season, um, but not what you want from your second-round pick. And this is another case where you look at it and say, yeah, second-round picks have not been very fruitful for us. Overshown, Looked like he was going to have the best um, rookie year for us as far as drafts went. But unfortunately, he got hurt early in the season. He may have made a heck of a difference for us, and hopefully he'll come back fully recovered this year and has the opportunity to really step in and play because we have a need at linebacker tremendously. Semi Fioco, 
um, got on the field from time to time, but not much of an impact. And so you start looking at this and saying, um, with the exception of our kicker, we didn't really do great as far as the draft. And here's the problem for the Cowboys. When you have a year like that, and then you go into a year like this year where you have the 25th, is it 25th or 26th? 25th pick, and then you get your second round pick, your third round pick, no fourth round pick, no fifth round pick. Um, you may get one as a compensatory one, but no guarantee it may be two sixes. You don't have a lot of draft capital to work with, and you're going to have to use free agency. And keep in mind that um, I don't know that Kellen Moore is going to be the genius that saves Jalen Hurts. But what I do know is he knows the personnel here with the Cowboys. And he knows Mike McCarthy. I don't know that Dan Quinn is going to be the difference maker on the Washington Commanders that do have the highest amount of cap space and the number two pick in the draft knows our personnel and our team as well, as well as Mike McCarthy. So it's going to be more difficult to fool those guys. The Cowboys are going to need to change things that they do, change a lot of things when they play those teams. I'm not going to say that those teams necessarily are going to be better than us. I don't think that the Washington Commanders are. But sometimes that doesn't matter if you know what the other team is going to do and knowing their weaknesses. The big question will be is, what will Washington do? Will Washington move up and try and get Clive Williams? That is going to be an interesting take. And I'm going to turn this over to ESPN on that one. Um, for me, they've been that route before. Taking, They have so many holes and so many things to fill. It may take two or three number ones to move up to get that because I can guarantee you that the Bears, why take just a little bit from Washington just to get the number two pick when I can take multiple picks from somebody else coming from further out? But then again, what do I know? Let's listen in. The NFL where the draft just over two months away and in Field Yates' first mock draft of the season, the former Heisman Trophy winner, USC quarterback, Caleb Williams projected to be taken by the Bears with the top pick. Now, overall, he's got five QBs going in the first round. You take a look there. One, two, three at the top of the draft. He's got the Patriots resetting with Drake May. The Commanders second picking the Heisman, current Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, ah. Speaking of, sir, yeah, yeah. sir, Commander Tim, yeah. look, our I want the truth. He's been a season ticket holder for a couple of decades now. We, <laughs> I went into the wrong line of work. I look good in that uniform. Maybe that should have been where I where I went, man. I love Commander Tim. That is oh, tremendous. Boy. All right, it's old. Never gets old. Mike T. We got to start with uh, those Commanders. Do you need to think? You think they need to go all in? Go get Caleb Williams. You think? I don't. I think they stand pat where they are. You can get Drake May. You know, some would take Jaden Daniels. And I really like Caleb Williams. I think he has a chance to be really good. Two things he's got to clean up, the turnovers and the sacks. He was sacked 83 times. And offensive tackles have been taught since Pop Warner pushed the pass rushers past the pocket. Caleb Williams has a really bad habit of trying to escape backwards. And he's running to a bunch of sacks. That could be fixed. Um, Look, they have some really good young players, and Tim knows that, you know, from Terry McLaurin and some of their other young skill players. And Drake May didn't have a lot to work with. I think you draft Drake May there. He has all the intangibles, and that's the way I would go. I wouldn't pay that massive premium for Caleb Williams. Legs, look at that. I said it. You season ticket holder for, like, a couple of decades now. Do you want Washington to trade up and go get Caleb Williams? I don't, and here's why. Because of the mixed bag of reviews I get with all the NFL people that I talk to. And I think that's scary to me for a guy that's supposed to be surefire number one. I feel like I don't hear as much of that with Drake May, or even Jaden Daniels, but I hear a lot of that with Caleb Williams. Like, the, the, the reviews are all over the place, and that kind of scares me that you're going to give up something additional when mm -hmm. you might be able to just pick the guy, too, that might be the better fit for your franchise. So that's scary. I, I'm almost like, in Washington, let it be like a Greg Oden, Kevin Durant situation, right? Yeah. Where being number two is good. 
Right, so you don't have a choice in the matter. Mm -hmm. It falls into your lap, or like a Brandon Ingram, See, like a CJ Stroud situation. There you go. That's what I'm saying. So I, I'm, I think I'm comfortable with that rather than give something up potentially and make the wrong pick, and you gave up additional assets. He's special, though. I've done a number of his games, and Bart, you look at him, the arm talent, the way he moves in the pocket, the throws he's make. he is special. Should they go up and go get him? No, I wouldn't. I mean, you, it's, this is the thing. Like, somebody's going to be a bust, and you don't know who it's going to be. I mean, I, I think the last time where we had three hits, I think what it was um, maybe – Eli Rivers and I forget who. Roethlisberger. And Roethlisberger, right? I don't, I don't know if this is what we're looking at. And mm -hmm. you talk about giving up additional assets for that. I think you just, you know, Jaden Daniels may be the best one, but we know environment matters. So you, are you prepared to be able to handle these young guys? If you bring in Caleb Williams, are you going to make him be the savior again? We watched what happened with Mitchell Trubisky. We watched what happened um, with Justin Fields. Are you going to bring in a competent backup like a Jacoby Brissett and say, hey, we're going to bring this guy along and we're not going to put him out there until we know that he's ready? You know, that's the pressure when you talk about being number one. If you lose, people, you know, start clamoring for him. Sometimes if you fall, sometimes you win because, you know, Lamar and, and, and Josh Allen, you know, landed on their feet. I don't think you have to overthink it. Sam Howell's right there. He's still a young, developing player. Like, if I'm Washington, I keep Sam Howell, I draft Drake May, and I, I roll from there. Just all Russell North Carolina. Day. Just just you and Tar day. Heels. <laughs> right? Like, that's the new plan in Washington. Look, I, I think if they could do it, then they should. I, I think there's – if your evaluation shows you that Caleb Williams is the, tr is the transformational player uh, and, and you don't feel the same way about Drake May or Jaden Daniels, then you have to make that effort. But for that reason, I, I don't think the pick's going to end up being for sale. <laughs> but I, I think right. Chicago probably just sits there and takes him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to your point, you don't hear as much about Drake May or Jaden Daniels in terms of that. But I think if either one of those were thought to be the consensus number one overall pick, you might. Right? I think, like, all you can do with Caleb right now is knock him down. Yeah. So I think that's why you're starting to hear those questions. And when you talk about Washington's situation, if they were able to do it, having Cliff Kingsbury there and his history, not just with Caleb Williams, but with other mobile quarterbacks that may have needed to iron out some of the stuff that Mike T is talking about, you know, and, and, and helping Kyler Murray transition to the NFL where he's been a good player. So I, I think there's a lot to be said for that situation for Caleb Williams. I, I just think it's a pipe dream because I think the Bears are going to take it. Yeah, yeah well, what would the Bears give that pickup for? They have two picks in the top ten. Right. Like, we're, we're, we're in the building process now. It's time mm -hmm. for Matt I've ever flew to win. And he's not going to give up a talent like that, and maybe not one that's supposed to be generational. All right, we talked about it this morning. You know, Carolina, we'll see what happens with Bryce Young, but the other thing that happened in that building every week was, oh, my God, look how good C.J. Stroud is. Chicago does not want to see Caleb Williams go to another team right. and be like, wow, look how good he is. Mm -hmm. the, the similar situation in the NBA, if you recall, remember Philadelphia 76ers traded up to get Markel Fultz with the number one pick, and they could have just held the pick and drafted Jason Tatum. Yeah. I don't know if this right. is that situation, <laughs> right. but I'm just saying. And, and now the Philadelphia 76ers fan base has to watch Jason Tatum torch them for like the next, you know, 15 yeah. years. All right. There you go. Interesting take. And I will say that the 2021 draft, number one, Trevor Lawrence. Number two, Zach Wilson. Number three, Trey Lance and thus far I don't know man the jury's out now CJ Stroud came into a great situation the funny thing is is they didn't really seem to be on board with CJ Stroud early on in fact it seemed like they were kind of denigrating the guy and he ends up coming out and playing phenomenal but it also depends on your circumstances of what you have around them, the coach that you have. There's so many different variables that it, it's just hard to get into. But let's be clear here. The Cowboys are going to need to get a home run with the few draft picks that they have. They're going to have to make the most out of them. And I, for one, am one that thinks that maybe they need to go ahead and use that number two. And I'm, I hate to say this because it's contrary to my usual beliefs where I say don't trade up because now you're risking two picks. But you need an impact. You need an impact in a guy that's going to be a, a player that's going to be there for the next 10 or 15 years. So we'll see where this all goes. And um, I will catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.